India is now the world's largest dairy producer, with almost all of this milk coming from small-scale farmers owning just a few dairy cows, or buffalo. The demand in the country for milk and milk products is booming, opening up big opportunities for small producers to benefit from new milk markets. But wide use of traditional dairy methods, especially poor quality and quantity of feed, can't keep up with the soaring demand. To help small dairy farmers compete, the International Livestock Research Institute, or ILLERI, teamed up with the Malukanor Woman's Cooperative Dairy in a two-part pilot study investigating the impact of a new fodder variety on milk productivity and how this high-tech forage might also improve gender equity in smallholder dairy farms. Hillary has taken the new fodder variety CoFS29 developed by the Regional Institute from Southern India and they wanted to test whether it increases the milk productivity and also how this new fodder changes the gender ecosystem within the smallholder dairy production system. Hillary's study area is northwest of the supertech city of Hyderabad, a semi-arid region in central India. Sixteen villages were involved within the operational zone of the Women's Dairy Cooperative, one of India's most successful and unique dairy institutions. Exclusively, all the membership of this dairy cooperative is given to women. There are 25,000 women members participating in this dairy cooperative. Women predominantly handle the dairy operation, from feeding and milking cows to processing and selling the milk, with men working right alongside. At its startup almost two decades ago, the cooperative tellingly chose to call its milk brand Shrakrushi, which translates as self-help, and developed marketing slogans claiming quality milk is Shrakrushi milk, which can be understood as self-empowered milk. A key point at the heart of the establishment of one of India's first all-women dairy cooperatives. Over the years, the cooperative conducted many trainings with other institutions, including numerous attempts to promote other green grasses that were often unsuccessful. For Ilori's new semi-arid study area, the promising COFS-29 grass variety, developed by the Tamil Nadu Agricultural University of Southern India, was chosen for its high and fast biomass production and high biomass feed quality. Initially, 25 women dairy farmers were given COFS-29 seeds and planting instructions. Kalavathi was one of them. During the study, Kalavathi went to trainings, planted the seeds, fed her cows, milked them twice a day, and delivered the milk on her motorbike. She learned everything she could about COFS-29. At the cooperative's collection point, her milk is weighed and tested and quickly given a value, a price per liter. There are three test factors that fix this price. Most important is fat content next to SNF and then specific gravity of the milk. All is being recorded automatically from the milk analyzer. Here we can see that the milk quantity was 1.49, 5.6 was the fat, 28.7 was the specific gravity. So the amount which is coming, 50 rupees 9 pies. That means around uh, 0 0.8 dollars she will get for this evening milk. Using the new feed, Kalavathi and the other dairy farmers were now consistently getting higher prices for their milk. Not only was quantity and quality improving, but dairy animal health as well. It had to be the COFS 29. Kalavathi's husband agreed. Every 
చదువులకు కానీ దేనికి కానీ మా ఖర్చులకు లోటు లేకుంటున్నది Word of mouth about the effectiveness of the grass quickly spread among the villages. Co-op members liked it because it grew fast, was easy to cut, and the dairy animals ate all of it because it had no sharp leaf edges, leaving no wastage. Shortly after, almost 500 farmers were planting COFS-29, with some even selling excess seeds, making a small business of it. అవి ఇవి పలితం వస్తుంది దాంతో లాభాలు వస్తాయని అమ్మది అనిపించేసి వాళ్ళు ఇంకా కొంచెం వేసుకోవాలి ఇంకా కొన్ని పైకి రావాలని అనుకున్నాను With COFS 29 adopted by the Women's Dairy members, it was time to ask the second part of Hillary's question. What gender transformations, if any, did this new green grass variety provoke? The answer lies partly in understanding why the Malukanor Women's Cooperative Dairy was set up in the first place, whose very start can be considered something of a gender transformation. So the most important aspect of this dairy cooperative is that the income from the milk sale, it goes straight away to their uh, woman and she has all the right to spend the income. Earlier, the mixed dairy cooperative, they're dominated by the men in the decision making or controlling the income. But in this cooperative, woman is the center. The vendor is a good example of a founding member of the cooperative. She joined 17 years ago. She was a daily laborer at the time, earning little money. ఈ మహిళా డైరీ స్టార్ట్ కాక ముందుకు అంత ముందుకు మహిళల పరిస్థితి ఏంటంటే ఇంట్లో పురుషు వాళ్ళు తీసుకొచ్చిన వాటితోనే చేసుకోవాలి Son who lives at home plans to expand her dairy business. He supports the idea of a woman's dairy cooperative and when he marries he wants his wife to join too. వాళ్ళలో డెవలప్‌మెంట్ బాగుంది వాళ్ళని గుర్తింపిచ్చి ఇట్లా చేయడం వల్ల వాళ్ళు ఈ రోజు సమాజంలో విలువగా బతుకుతున్నారు వాళ్ళ చేతిలో ఉంది కాబట్టి ఇప్పుడు సో అంత ముందుకు డైరీ లేక ముందుకు వాళ్ళకి ఏం లేదు కదా వాళ్ళని ఎవరు గుర్తింపు లేదన్నట్టు మంచి గుర్తింపు వచ్చింది ఇప్పుడు ఈ డైరీ కాబట్టి మహిళలకి ప్రథమ స్థానంలో ఉన్నారు మంచిగా Once the survey results were in, it was clear that use of this green fodder influenced gender norms in three ways: time, knowledge, and money. Usually in the villages, women graze the animal for at least 3 to 4 hours every day. When Ilri introduced this new green fodder, they started planting this near their homestead land that has given women some decreased work burden. The 3 to 4 hours needed for grazing was reduced to 20 to 30 minutes, freeing up time for women to get involved more with family and leadership activities. Kalavathi, for example, ran her dairy and had time to become chair of the local dairy co-op, something once unheard of for a woman with little free time. Sometimes women can't carry such a huge load of this green grass. That time, men he started helping to carry it. As dairy was becoming more lucrative and less labor intensive than crop growing, more men willingly shared the dairy burden with the women to gain more income for the entire household and extra time for themselves as well. This is one of the gender norm changed through green fodder innovation. Knowledge enables. The original 25 women in the pilot study learned all about COFS 29 cultivation and its use. Then they took this information and did something with it. Previously, men always used to think that key is the knowledge power, key is to direct the woman. When woman is having knowledge on anything like feeding, how to feed the animal, within her household, she gets respect. Men are the traditional knowledgeable farmers. With the adoption of COFS 29, women are now knowledgeable farmers as well. This is a change in gender perceptions and norms, which promises to lead to even more decision-making by women in the future.
Cooperative members milk their cows and are given a price for the milk, a value for their efforts. Every 15 days, their co-op delegates present the village milk bill at the main co-op office and return home to distribute the cash to the dairy farmers. When women is getting more income, men started feeling easy because it is reduced his burden that, oh, I have to earn money. This increased income has posed some good relationship between men and women within the household. The gender norm change here is that before, only men were considered the breadwinners. With this forage innovation, women's dairy contribution to the household income is now becoming more significant. Hillary's pilot study introducing a new fodder variety to small-scale dairy farmers in India yielded not only greater milk quality and quantity, but also greater gender equity. The innovation further reduced women's labor, giving them more time to spend with family and community. Yet, still more needs to be done. This innovation should be scaled up to reach all members of the cooperative, and household gender norms should be further studied especially as increasing numbers of educated and entrepreneurial young people are becoming more involved with the Moroccan Women's Cooperative Dairy.